Sir, it appears that Politico, a U.S.-based newspaper, wields significant influence over the politics of the United States, as evident from its news and allegations. One of their latest reports suggests that Donald Trump, following his victory in the American presidential election, has developed a list of individuals he wishes to seek revenge against. Although the existence of an actual list may not be necessary, it is not difficult to speculate on its contents, given that Trump has shown a tendency for vengeance during his four-year tenure. I refrain from taking sides, but it is clear that Trump has had numerous conflicts with individuals and entities involved in politics. The involvement extends beyond politics and extends into the legal realm, where some parties have faced consequences for their actions. It is anticipated that Trump's retaliatory actions will be no better than those he condemns. As such, there is speculation regarding the identities of the individuals included in Donald Trump's revenge list, based on his political news in relation to Joe Biden. I do not anticipate the creation of a revenge list in response to the extensive mockery that Donald Trump directed at Joe Biden during his presidency. Trump's mocking behavior escalated, particularly in the final months of the presidential campaign, ultimately leading to Trump's withdrawal from the race and Kamala Harris announcing her own candidacy. It is possible that Trump's aggressive stance was influenced by his perception of a lack of a strong Democratic candidate. However, it is uncertain whether there is a potential for a revenge list specifically targeting Kamala Harris and whether such a list would be connected to the judiciary. The question of whether any revenge actions would involve legal matters remains unanswered. It cannot be determined with certainty whether there is a likelihood of a revenge list that would focus solely on Kamala Harris. It is notable that during this election period, the previous president of the United States, Barack Obama, was involved in the Democrat campaign and actively criticized Trump using harsh words. There is speculation that Obama may have done so out of a desire to see Trump lose or possibly due to his past working relationship with him. Additionally, it is suggested that Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State, had opponents in the election, including Mark Zuckerberg, who allegedly campaigned against her behind her back. The extent of Zuckerberg's involvement remains uncertain. There are allegations that Zuckerberg, who runs a social media platform, openly opposed this campaign rather than supporting it. Some claim that he harbored resentment and even vowed vengeance on his own platform, despite maintaining a facade of neutrality. These claims, however, are based on speculation. It is strongly believed that the content on Hunter Biden's laptop holds significant importance, evidenced by a letter written by 51 intelligence officers referring to it under a certain code. It appears that key individuals involved in the judicial system, such as FBI officers, prosecutors, and judicial authorities, cooperated in handing over Donald Trump to the judiciary and may consequently find themselves on Trump's revenge list. It is known that Trump particularly relishes the challenge of going up against established figures and institutions within the American political landscape, often referred to as the deep state or the formal state apparatus. It is anticipated that these developments will create political news and attract attention. Furthermore, there are mentions of several lesser known politicians whose names are not widely discussed but are perceived to be connected to the prospect of revenge. These claims are featured in what appears to be a list of congratulations, where it is implied that some individuals are biding their time to exact their revenge. It is worth noting that what is being said and what is being felt may not necessarily align. This information will likely be covered in future news reports, bringing further insight into these matters. With the announcement of Donald Trump's victory in the United States, not only politicians but also business and technology leaders lined up to congratulate him. Mark Zuckerberg, owner of social media platforms Facebook and Instagram, had chosen to remain neutral before the election. When Trump won, he immediately posted a congratulatory message. He wrote, our country has great opportunities ahead of us, and I look forward to working with you. However, Zuckerberg had imposed a two-year ban on Trump's Facebook and Instagram accounts after the congressional raid in January. Trump, who reacted harshly to the decision, put Zuckerberg on the revenge list and said that when I return to the White House, we will not eat dinner again. 
Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, who did not support any candidate in the election, also celebrated Trump's victory, calling his re-election an extraordinary political comeback. And Tim Cook, CEO of Apple. Cook, who did not support Trump's election campaign, says he looks forward to working with Trump and his administration. Leaders who have previously had tensions with Trump also want to turn over a new leaf. The president of Ukraine was one of the first to congratulate the 47th president of the United States. It was noteworthy that Zelensky put aside his criticism of Trump, who is in favor of cutting military aid to his country, and gave a moderate message. He said he wanted to work with Trump for a just peace in Ukraine. He also spoke to Trump by phone and praised his campaign work and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu was the first to congratulate Biden after the 2000 elections, while Trump was still contesting the results, driving a wedge between the two. Trump reacted by saying that he could have kept silent, he made a terrible mistake. This tension continued afterwards. However, Netanyahu, who has experienced crisis after crisis with the Biden administration, now wants to turn Trump's election into an opportunity. That's why he wiped the slate clean and congratulated Trump. NATO countries in Europe also want to make a good start with Trump because during his first presidential term, Trump threatened European countries that if they didn't spend enough on defense, we wouldn't protect them.